And when I first visited this place, it was almost a barren land. There was nothing. When he came to this barren land, there was nothing around it. It was a desert, absolute desert. Built on once barren land, the Mahabodhi Center is locally called Devachan, a heavenly abode tucked in surreal atmosphere of bare rocky hills and towering Himalayan peaks that surround it. Mahabodhi International Meditation Center was set up in 1991 by one extraordinary person. This fantastic place is far more than a world-renowned center for meditation. It's now a vibrant hub of educational, humanitarian, and spiritual services. Over the years, it has grown into a facility that houses more than 500 people, including children, the elderly, and the disabled, all of whom who live in a peaceful ambiance. But who did this miracle? Who was the mastermind? And what is his story? For this, we must turn to the high Himalaya and a place called Ladakh, or the land of high passes. Ladakh is among the highest inhabited places on earth. Here, the oldest Buddhist traditions are still thriving. Remote but never isolated, this trans-Himalayan land is the repository of myriad cultural and religious influences from Central Asia, India, and Tibet. Monasteries, Buddhist chants, monastic festivals, folk songs and dances, centuries-old monuments, all have been kept well-preserved here by the people of Ladakh as they take careful steps into the modern world. The Trans-Himalayan mountain ranges, with numerous glaciers and the mighty Indus River with its tributaries, provide an oasis in this arid, high-altitude landscape. Situated at an elevation of 3,500 to over 6,000 meters above sea level, the summer temperatures in Ladakh range between 25 and 35 degrees Celsius. The winters, however, can be exceptionally harsh, with temperatures dipping as low as minus 30 degrees. It is in this place that the founder of Devachan, whose original name was Sering Wangchuk, was born. Coming from a deeply religious and humble farming family in Timosgang village in western Ladakh, Wangchuk was brought up in an age-old Buddhist tradition of peace, humility, and innocence as the natural way of life. At age 17, he joined the Indian Army, where he developed a strong sense of personal discipline and responsibility. As a soldier, Wang Chuk was vigilant in guarding the highest defense posts along this remote border. And, at the same time, he devoutly performed his daily prayers and the lighting of the butter lamp. One day, in response to a deep inner spiritual calling, he shed this mundane life and entered into the stream of Dharma. It was then, in the year 1977, that Wang Chuk met his guru, the venerable Acharya Buddha Arkita who ordained him as a monk 
and gave him a new name, Sanghasena. Venerable Sanghasena, after having got the training of a soldier, decided instead to be the soldier for the Buddha. And that is uh, trying to fight poverty, illiteracy, in, in, order, in order to bring happiness uh, to the world. And for a person without any formal education to be able to do this uh, work that we see that, that is happening in Devachan and the other parts of Ladakh, I would say this is tr simply amazing. When I decided to go to South India to become a monk, I have no idea to uh, come back to Ladakh. My Guruji also told me that the idea of uh, spending the rest of your life as a yogi, yogi in a mountain or forest is not a uh, bad idea, but uh, you owe something to your people. So in 1986, I came back to Ladakh and started a small meditation center in a rented house in Lay City. So I soon realized that the best uh, religion for the hungry is the food. The best religion for the thirsty is water. The best religion uh, for the sick is uh, the doctor and medicine. And for the homeless people to have a basic home to protect them from the severe cold and heat is the priority before we go to the high philosophical teachings of Buddha. His charitable works, his humanitarian works are so beautiful. Just imagine one man, when he came to this barren land, there was nothing around it. And now today you see this whole jungle became a mangal, a place of peace and prosperity. And peace and prosperity only comes when you serve others, when you serve all without any barriers of caste, greed, and color. So 1991, we have moved to this new campus here in Choklamsar, what is today known as the Devachan campus. My first uh, uh, priority was to establish a residential school for the underprivileged children. In 1992, we started uh, the hostel with 25 girls from these remote villages. Education here extends far beyond literacy. The school provides a balanced environment focused on shaping children into better human beings directed toward their multi-dimensional growth. Love for learning, empathy for others, unity in diversity, compassion in action, and a sense of social and moral responsibility are the values instilled here. It is about building a wholesome person, having the spirit of service for others out of sheer love and compassion, rather than for one's own interests. The core philosophy is that education should be available to all, regardless of family status, gender, social conditions, or disability. Everyone has the right to the best possible education, and Mahabodhi offers it with the utmost care, love, and compassion. Over time, the need was felt to expand the facility, and the hostel has been greatly enlarged. Now, there are 140 girl students who receive a quality education as well as health care. The hostels at Mahabodhi today are a knowledge center and a home for 140 boys and 130 girls, all from destitute families in remote parts of Ladakh. Students are provided with basic facilities of free food, shelter, and clothing thus enabling them to grow to become educated and responsible citizens. The Mahabudi education program aims to reform the current job and information-oriented 
education into such a way that the students grow physically strong. Physically strong. Mentally brilliant. Mentally brilliant. Culturally rich. Culturally rich. Spiritually enlightening. Spiritually enlightening. Environmentally friendly and globally peaceful. Mahabodhi believes that every child admitted to school is a precious asset, and nurturing that child to their fullest intellectual and spiritual potential is what the center strives for, always with great care and sincerity. The growing demand is now pushing it to extend the facility to some 400 more children. The high reputation of education at Mahabodhi is demonstrated by the accomplishments of its students. Among all students throughout Ladakh, Mahabodhi students are known to excel, not only in their school curriculum, but also in every sphere of activity. Turning his attention to his own village of Timosgang, which too was facing a lack of proper education, in 1999, Sanghasena opened a Mahabodhi branch school there. Today, more than 140 students are receiving a quality education on par with national standards. Bodkarbu village in Kargil also had a severe lack of educational facilities. And Mahabodhi opened a branch school there in 2004. Around 150 students from remote villages of both Leh and Cargill districts are currently studying here. Once studies are completed at the Timos Gang and Botkarbu schools, students can then move to the main Devachan campus for further education. We are not only giving emphasis to the academic achievement, but also believe in giving the children a comprehensive and a balanced education matching to the present need. He is teaching not only uh, maths, science, English, also that the spiritual education and science education is in balance. He is education for the whole body and mind. And I think there are not many schools all over the world which do it in this way. When the first batch of students completed of the 10th grade, I have taken them to Bangalore for their higher studies. But soon I realized that it will not be financially viable to send so many students every year to such a far place, an expensive city like Bangalore. Seeking to ease their transition into higher education, Mahabodhi established a girls' hostel in Chandigarh city, which presently has a capacity for 100 female students. These girls have been provided all the facilities. There is a school bus which takes them in the morning to their schools and colleges and brings them back in the evening. And uh, after little rest and refreshment, they, before they go on for studies, they do the meditation. So, which is a very unique thing. It is only maybe for 20 minutes, but it's a daily affair. And uh, over the period that I've been associated with uh, Mahabodhi till date, lot of uh, good organizations, charitable organizations, NGOs, they, have, they are wanting to get associated with Mahabodhi. Soon after completing my 10th grade from the Mahabodhi Residential School, Guruji has sent us to Bangalore. And soon after completing my higher study in Bangalore, I came back to this organization to give my little service in whatever possible way I could give back to my Guruji and to this organization. And I'm truly grateful and I'm honored and I'm blessed that my Guruji have so much faith in me and trust in me uh, to give me the responsibility of the meditation center. And I'm ever grateful to my most uh, Revered Master, Venerable Bhikkhu Sangha Sena for transforming my life through the light of education and of course through the light of moral education. I would 
like to thank Venerable Sangasena for giving me education. His dedication, his work, and everything, we, we just uh, appreciate him. Thank you, Venerable Sangasena, my beloved teacher, father, mother, role into one, for transforming, uh, transforming my life. In order to select the most needy children, as well as mentally and physically challenged elderly people needing help at the Mahabodhi campus, Sangha Sena himself has undertaken difficult winter travel to the remote high regions of the Changtang Plateau and other parts of Ladakh. He realized the importance of education. He did not have the benefit of education himself, formal education himself, and uh, realizing that education is the biggest leveler, the most empowering tool, he began with schools for children from far off areas, from remote areas, who he would go and handpick himself and give them quality education in the Mahabodhi International Meditation Center. He's an incredible uh, teacher of the Dhamma. He, because of his ability to inspire, to motivate, and in order to ask people to move beyond themselves so that they can actually be able to put uh, uh, to move up in terms of levels of, um, uh, the, uh, of the actions into uh, compassion, uh, into uh, uh, to, to work in terms of Dhamma. The task of bringing students of the Zanskar region to Leh after the winter vacation is again a big challenge for Mahabodhi. They have to travel on foot on the frozen Zanskar River for seven days. Negotiating the treacherous rocky terrain and spending freezing nights in caves along the way. From the uh, main trust of his charitable work or compassion in action is actually education. Because of that goal that he has, I think he has changed many, many young children and uh, they have now become adults. And through the uh, process of that transformation that he has uh, introduced, the children are now more morally inclined and they have actually an asset which most uh, students from other secular schools will not be able to achieve. I have been a part of uh, this institute since the inception of the school, that is back in 1992, when this school started with 25 little girls selected from the most remote areas of Ladakh. After completion of our uh, basic education here, that is up to 10 standard, uh, the 25 selected girls were sent to Bangalore for their higher studies and today I'm very happy that after completion of my master's degree and then uh, followed by BA degree and MIT program, I joined the school as the principal and I'm very fortunate and very happy that my Guruji accepted me in this institution back which is my, I would not say my second home but in fact my first home because it is from this school that uh, life has been transformed for me, my own life and many more lives like me have been transformed. I'm very happy that I'm on board with my Guruji on his wonderful mission to serve humanity. The teachings of the Lord Buddha bestowed full freedom upon both men and women to participate in religious life. In particular, to give women an opportunity to provide their capability to attain the highest positions in religious sphere, the Buddha established a bhikkhuni order. In the past, however, the nuns in Ladakh did not have the chance for such study. 
They lacked a proper nunnery, with regular classes on the teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha. I strongly feel that any kind of discriminations against women and nuns is totally unfair and unjust. All the uh, women and the nuns should enjoy equal support, equal respect to learn and to practice the Dharma and to live a very dignified human life. In 1996, Sangha Sena, with the initial support from the Buddha's Light International Association, established the Mahabodhi Nunnery, the first of its kind in Ladakh. For the first time, nuns started getting both religious and modern education. Due to the gratefulness and the uh, gratitude of our revered master, Venerable Sangasena, we the nuns of nunnery are able to get the basic monastery trainings and also the modern secular educations for our life. Nuns continue to receive little support from spiritual leaders or the community, and there is still an urgent need to give them a proper education and higher level spiritual training. It is our sincere wish to train the Mahabodhi nuns as skillful and respectful Dhamma and meditation teachers. Starting with 10 novice monks in 2004, Sangha Sena for the first time introduced Ladakis to the theory and practice of the Buddha's teachings found in the Pali Tripitaka. Today, the Mahabodhi Jetavana Monastery is the only Theravada monastery in the entire Western Himalaya. In addition to spiritual training and education, these monks receive a complete modern secular education at the Mahabodhi school. On completing the training, our monks will supervise the spiritual and humanitarian service program of the Mahabodhi. There is an immense demand for good Dharma teachers. Lama Bhikkhu Sangasena Ji, who has given his life for the sake of humanity, as a young man, he served the army. Now with his open arms, he is serving the whole world. Through the teaching of Lord Buddha, he is a man of passion and man of compassion. He is a man of action and he is a man of perfection. It has been always my strong wish to provide institutions of education for the visually impaired children. In Ladakh, there were no such facilities for blind children. I was very much moved by the plight of such blind children uh, when I met them in different villages of Ladakh. Determined to reach out to these children, in 2006, Sangha Sena sent a team to rural areas of Ladakh in order to convince parents to allow him to provide an education for their blind child. Yes, with a couple of uh, needy blind children brought in here, my dream was fulfilled and the school and hostel for them were started after they came. Which was inaugurated by the President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. I have not been handicapped by my condition, but I am physically challenged. Angmo was not born blind. She gradually lost her sight when she was studying in the third standard in Himachal Pradesh. Angmo had to discontinue her studies as she lost her sight completely. But she didn't give up. Today, due to the great care and attention of Mahabodhi, Angmo is pursuing her studies in Chandigarh with great optimism. I lost every hope of life when I lost my eyesight. So luckily I contact with Mahabodhi and I met with my beloved Guruji who transformed my darkness life with education. So right now I pursue my higher education in Delhi University as well as I learn many new things 
for example sports and basic mountain course which i had done last summer Ladakh has a very strong extended family network which generally ensures peace of mind and a sense of security for elderly people as they enjoy the company and the respect of close family members in the majority of ladakhi households the elderly continue to live alongside their younger family members under one roof but sadly this family structure is not universally experienced throughout ladakhi society today until the mid 1990s no facilities existed for elderly people who had lost their families and were alone often they were mentally or physically handicapped and faced intense alienation and psychological stress the intense cold winter in ladakh was another much feared enemy of these old people in 1995 help finally came when mahabodhi opened the first old age home in ladakh this home provides a place for these discarded elders to be cared for with compassion and understanding as they grow old and physically or mentally challenged <laughs> Ladao did not have an old age home and uh, given the times now when families are nucleating there was need for the old age home gumman hasn't been able to come up with one sangasena has come up with one and i have seen myself how the old elderly people are looked after so well when i heard about the terrible flights of abilaskit i immediately decided to bring her to the mahabodhi devachan campus and uh, we built a small home for her and from abilaskit i realized that there are so many others elderly people who are really need of a home for them thus the mahabodhi metri olesh home was established and uh, today there are 37 elderly people along with the uh, eight mentally and physically challenged one living very peacefully happily and a secure life there and it is our sincere wish to extend the facilities for about 100 such elderly people housed in a large solar heated building with comfortable bedrooms a clean dining hall a prayer room and a well equipped hospital the mahabodhi maitri old age home is a personal and collective family space everyone at mahabodhi is happy but the happiest of all are the grandparents who live in the maitri old age home they ask for little and are always smiling always welcoming they have maximum happiness yet minimum requirements spinning their prayer wheels and tirelessly reciting mantras residents here live happily and peacefully with a renewed sense of community and belonging when i come here i was very surprised uh, the elderly uh, people uh, we can see the happiness uh, of the elderly people there in another words he can actually transform uh create the environment that uh, people uh, who are in the uh, the home are happy Mahabodhi has also started its own empowerment campaign for women by offering training in basic reading and writing skills The women's literacy project was started in 1998 with 33 women from Stockmo village who were taught Ladakhi language reading and writing skills Today Mahabodhi runs similar trainings in 20 villages throughout the region benefiting hundreds of women 
who would otherwise remain illiterate. Prevalence of real understanding and trust among differing communities is one of the important goals of Sanghasena Mahatra. To realize this goal, Mahabodhi has invited different religious leaders to conduct regular interfaith activities that foster peace and friendship among different religions. Uh, as a Muslim, I must say that we are lucky to have a person like Sanghasena who is doing such a good work for the communal harmony, for the coexistence of the Dhaki society. Like the great Buddha, he left his worldly life and became a monk. He urges everyone to promote spiritual and cultural values, environment protection, world peace, and religious harmony. Through his noble propagation of the Buddha's teaching on equality and freedom, Sanghasena also works to bring radical social transformation to millions of disadvantaged and discriminated people in other parts of India. People who suffer unreasonably as a consequence of the caste system, thus empowering them and enabling them to live with fundamental human rights and real dignity. What sun is to the flowers, meditation is to the mind. Through meditation, one can develop inner peace and equanimity, and thereby contribute to world peace and harmony. Life becomes more meaningful and beneficial when a person does meditation, because it teaches one thing, the art of living. Today, the Mahabodhi Devachan campus is an important destination for an increasing number of spiritually minded tourists who have traveled from all parts of the globe to come to Ladakh in search of peace and the true meaning of life. Frustrated by the fast-paced, highly polluted and disturbing nature of modern life, many come to Mahabodhi Devachan to participate in various meditation yoga, and spiritual teachings and humanitarian service programs. Thus, you will not be able to purify your mind and heart if you don't follow. Sanghasena Mahatra is now known around the world as a meditation master who first introduced Vipassana meditation to the Ladakhi people. A large section of the local population as well as foreign tourists, have benefited from this meditation technique, which has totally transformed many lives. The Mahabodhi campus is also an important center for cultural exchange, a meeting point of East and West. It is a place to learn, a place to explore the hidden truth and beauty of life, a place to share experiences and views with one another, and a place to promote interreligious harmony. Santo ka koi mazhab nahi hota. Santa ko mazhab hota hai insaniyat. Insaniyat ke liye hamesha is par unhone bahut kaam kiya. Ladakh ke andar chuki Buddhist aur Muslim do do community badi tadad mein wahan rehti hai. Aur kisi bhi main musalmano se jab inke bare mein baat kari wahan ke imamon se maine jab baat ki to sabhi ne bahut khushi ka izhar kiya aap ko sab chahte hain over the years mahabodhi has undertaken various forms of rescue and rehabilitation work including emergency relief such as food, warm clothing, and blankets. The Mahabodhi Center has played a key role in rebuilding Ladakhi houses after the devastating floods in 2010. 
that left hundreds of families homeless. Mahabodhi helped many school children whose families had been severely affected by the flood, some becoming orphans or rendered homeless. These children were either admitted to the Mahabodhi hostel or were helped with free education at the Mahabodhi Residential School. Also, Mahabodhi extended its support to the farmers in many villages, clearing debris, boulders, and mud from their agricultural fields. But charity projects are not just confined to Ladakh. Mahabodhi also rushed to Gujarat in 2001 when the devastating earthquakes there destroyed the entire village of Kutch. The center carried out rehabilitation programs and constructed a school for the community there. In 2005, during a devastating earthquake in Juman Kashmir, Mahabodhi, with the help of its sponsors, its uh, supporters, managed to construct 42 houses for the Kashmiri people in Uri district. In 2014, Kashmir had a heavy flash flood and a lot of destruction in the valley. Venerable Sangha Sena personally led a rehabilitation charity program to Kashmir Valley and helped the people reconstruct their houses to many Kashmiri families. I think in this world there are people who come and they have a mission. And I think he found his mission and he blooms and become a catalyst for all these changes. The good that he, he can do for people, he has done and he's still doing. He does not claim to be a Buddhist scholar, but he is one of those quiet workers. He, he, he believes in, uh, he calls himself an engaged Buddhist. His, his Buddhism comes out of the work that he does for the poor. Mahabodhi has recently organized the International Festival of Buddhist Heritage whose goal is to promote understanding and appreciation of the diverse ethnic culture of the different communities of Ladakh. This multi-day affair has seminars on Buddhism, meditation and yoga, a film festival, and photo exhibitions, cultural performances, handicraft and culinary exhibits, and a cultural tour of heritage sites. This festival has proved to be a resounding success, gaining admiration and appreciation from both participants and observers. Thousands of trees have been planted at Devachan, contributing beauty as well as environmental conservation. Ecologically, trees create an oasis of shade and provide microhabitats for other plants and animals. An efficient drip irrigation system has been installed throughout parts of the campus, which is effective in conserving water and ensuring a high rate of survival for each tree planted in this harsh environment. Here, when it was barren land 10-15 years back, I've seen that it is entirely green through drip irrigation and through many artificial methods for cleaning and greening. He has done a big work and this is a record. The biggest challenge Mahabodhi faced in creating the Devachan Center was a lack of water. Rainfall in this area is rare, and the success of Mahabodhi depended entirely on a reliable water supply. Through careful drilling of wells and application of many water-saving measures, today Mahabodhi has an adequate volume of water to serve the daily needs of many hundreds of people. A solar water heating system is installed in seven different wings 
of the campus, offering a potential of more than 10,000 liters per day. The residents of Devachan thus enjoy hot water throughout the year, even during the coldest winter months. The Orchard Project is another important step in making the Mahabodhi Center self-sustaining. Over a period of years, more than 1,200 apple and apricot trees have been planted, made up of species native to the area. These trees are specially adapted to the high elevation and short growing season, and, much to the delight of everyone at the Devachan campus, they've started bearing fruit. The greenhouses at the Devachan campus make it possible to grow and increase the availability of fresh organic vegetables year-round for Mahabodhi's own consumption. A wide range of vegetables are grown here. The Sambodhi Retreat Center is an inspiring sanctuary of tranquil contemplation, offering both short and long-duration meditation classes. Surrounded by rocky mountains on one side and golden sand dunes on the other, this fascinating landscape forms the backdrop for meditators and visitors to enjoy the highest and most silent place to meditate in the Himalaya. The sacred and eye-catching Milarepa Rock Cave provides silent spiritual encouragement, while the healing garden aims to meet the physical, psychological, social, and the spiritual needs of meditators and visitors alike. Bountiful fruit orchards, fluttering prayer flags, and enigmatic stupas all combine to make a uniquely powerful and transformative environment for those who are seeking inner peace and wisdom. It is the effort and the vision and the volition of Venerable Sangha Senaji that what it is now is complete change picture. And slowly and gradually the life started emitting from this barren land. Being a charitable organization, Mahabodhi runs all of its activities almost entirely through donations as its main source of income. An exception to this is the Global Family Home, a complex of 66 rooms with attached baths, which is an income-generating project at Mahabodhi. Besides their own guests and supporters, the Mahabodhi Global Family Home welcomes all spiritually inclined tourists who can enjoy the serene and uplifting environment of the Devachan campus while vacationing in Ladakh. The message of Buddha is so beautiful and is so perfect for the whole world and that's what is needed today. World does not need the yuddha, the war. World needs the Buddha means the peace. No war but peace. Choice is ours whether you Think about Buddha or the youth. Unfortunately, today's world is deeply disturbed by hatred and conflict. Terrorism has resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of innocent people worldwide, propagated on the basis of ethnic and religious fanaticism. For this reason, compassion and tolerance are more necessary than ever to alleviate human suffering. Compassionate hearts in action can facilitate the changes that are required to create a truly peaceful and harmonious existence for all. 
I strongly feel the need of observing Mahakaruna Day worldwide in order to spread the strong message about the importance of love, compassion, tolerance and brotherhood the world really need today to lead a peaceful life without fear and insecurity. With this idea, the Mahabodhi organized the Mahakaruna Day as its annual event since the last few years. With the participation of the eminent religious leaders of the different faith, I intend to make the day a regular event at the global level. Several years back, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama visited <coughs> Baba Andri's Center for Serving the uh, uh, Leprosy Patients. And uh, His Holiness uttered the word, I'm just preaching Karuna and you are practicing Karuna. So I thought this is applicable with uh, Sangasana as well. We are preaching Karuna and he is exactly practicing Karuna to looking after the old people, children, uh, patients and uh, uh, needies and all this. So we appreciate. His idea to make here a place where people from all over the world can come, meet, uh, talk together, learn from each other. That is the idea of the global family and the idea that we are all human beings. There's no different if you are Indian, American, German or something, we are human beings. And that is what uh, us deeply impressed. He is not talking about the Dhamma, he is living the Dhamma. The Lord Buddha said, those who serve the sick serve me. These words have motivated Sanghasena Mahatra to open a modern, well-equipped hospital at the Devachan campus. Today, it has become a vital health service provider in the region with good doctors, quality medicines, and state-of-the-art medical equipment. The beneficiaries are patients who often cannot afford expensive treatments and medicines. In addition, Mahabodhi holds unique health camps, inviting specialist doctors to treat those who cannot afford to travel to cities like Delhi for treatment of difficult diseases. Ever since the launch of this health campaign, the Mahabodhi medical team has changed the lives of thousands in Ladakh through eye operations, dental surgeries, and other difficult procedures. Mahabodhi wants to redefine the meaning of healthcare by integrating modern allopathic medicine traditional Buddhist Amchi practices and meditation as a holistic approach to health treatment, attending to body, mind, and spirit. Mahabodhi has put special emphasis on organizing mobile clinics for nomad people in remote areas like the Changtong Plateau in eastern Ladakh. These nomads are constantly on the move with their sheep, goats, and yak. When they face medical emergencies, traditional doctors or hospitals are often entirely out of reach. In such situations, mobile health clinics from Mahabodhi have filled an essential need. <laughs> I am very happy to tell you that I am a student from this organization. I studied here. I was selected as uh, one of the students here because I am from a very remote village of Ladakh and uh, my village is around 132 kilometers from Leh and uh, my father passed away when I was just two years old so then uh, my mother got remarried so I had nobody to take care of me 
So I was selected as one of the most deserving students for this school and I belong to the fourth batch. I joined this hostel in 1994 and since then I have been studying here with the best facilities and education at Mahabodhi Institute. I passed in 2004 with very good uh, marks and then I was selected as one of the students to continue my education at South India. So I am very happy that Venerable Sangasena has trusted and given me this opportunity to explore more outside. I did my dental school for five years and I did some uh, course in root canals and I finished everything and then I thought it is my uh, duty to come back to Mahabodhi and serve here as uh, much as I can and I am very happy doing it. Sanghasena Mahatra has distinguished himself as a highly energetic and effective social worker, spiritual reformer, and peacemaker. His unparalleled humanitarian services, including his contributions to interfaith dialogue and harmony, his promotion of education and friendship, and his emphasis on spiritual values, are now widely accredited at the global level. In recognition of his supreme service to humanity, Song Hasena has received many national and international awards, all a testimony to his unwavering dedication to the betterment of the world for the benefit of all. The work that he has done is very inspiring because it is actually putting compassion into action. It is uh, putting Dhamma into practice. We can talk about compassion about love, but the true test of whether a person really has compassion is through his works. Wherever he travels, Sangha Sena attracts followers drawn to his strength of intention and his purity of heart. We sense this quality intuitively, and so Sangha Sena is never without admirers, both young and old. But Sangha Sena's vision his dreams and his inspirations do not end here. What you have seen of Devachan is just a drop in the vast ocean of potential. Devachan still has miles to go to reach its final destiny, and Sanghasena Mahatra aims not only to improve the life of Ladakhis, but also to send a strong message of love, compassion, and brotherhood to the whole world. As Sangha Sena himself says, our own peace and happiness and our own health and harmony strongly depend on the welfare of others near and far. If we really want to lead a meaningful life, we must work. Work to improve our own mind work to serve the communities in which we live, and work for peace and harmony in the world. This has been my life's goal. I hope you will join me.